How did your father start Dearborn Sausage Company? My dad learned his trade in old country, uh, Hungary. And he was uh, 12 years old. And that was in uh, 1907. And he learned butchering and uh, slaughtering, uh, sausage making. And came to the United States in 1921 in Pennsylvania. And uh, late in uh, Late in the late 20s, he opened up a butcher shop and was pretty successful at it. However, during the depression of the 30s, he uh, went bankrupt. People didn't pay their bills and he uh, couldn't pay his bills. So they had to close up shop there. And in 1942, came to uh, Detroit area and uh, he worked at a sausage factory. He wanted to start a business, but the war broke out. World War II, and he wasn't able to get meat, he, he felt at that time, because everything was rationed. So he uh, opened up business in Dearborn, Michigan in 1946. How did your father come up with the name Dearborn Sausage Company? Well, we, were, we became uh, residents of Dearborn, and he just felt that uh, it, was, it was pretty common to use a city or state that you lived in or your surname to form a company. And for some reason, he picked Dearborn, of course, living in Dearborn. That was his choice. What was originally made at the first Dearborn Sausage Company? Well, in the early stages, he didn't make any cooked products. He only made fresh sausage, breakfast sausage, fresh Polish sausage, and Hungarian sausage, and a few other fresh-type ethnic sausages. And then he... Uh, built a smokehouse and uh, some cooking facilities, went into uh, hot dogs and salamis and cooked items and smoked items. And in 1951-ish, uh, he built a new factory in, in the south end of Dearborn, not too far from the original site, and uh, grew from there. How did Dearborn Sausage Company expand? On, um, on Fernie is where the uh, dad's uh, first building that he built was, and then we had, we added on from there. And uh, there was a building in back of us, and I bought that, and we joined the two uh, buildings as uh, our uh, sales kept increasing. And the, the, the demand was there, so we would uh, we kept growing with that demand, and of course we had to do some major renovations with uh, putting in some modern uh, cooking facilities, modern packaging facilities and, uh, to meet uh, federal, uh, new federal inspection uh, rules, regulations. And uh, of course we had a small retail uh, facility and uh, we built a bigger one and then still a, another bigger one. And of course we needed uh, a great deal of storage. We have now we have storage, uh, both uh, refrigerated storage areas that will uh, will hold about a million and a half pounds of product. When did you start working for your father? It was in 1957. I started working for my dad. I was I used to work in the summertime while I was going to college. I had two years of college in. Anyway, he wanted me to take over the business and in 1958. I um, started working full-time and I had a trucking route and helped my dad make sausage and did the bookkeeping. And in uh, 1960, he wanted me to completely take over. He wanted to retire. So I was like 23 years old. And I began to buy stock and, and uh, eventually bought the building and continued to buy stock and I grew from there. So how did you learn your trade? My dad did teach me uh, many things about making sausage and uh, one of the things he always said was whatever, when you make something good, make it good all the time. And uh, then I learned from, from others and I did a lot of uh, research in uh, some uh, recipe books. And I, I asked around a lot, and uh, I 
just kept learning as I went along. Learned about spices and uh, the um, potencies of them and various curing methods. And, uh, and of course, uh, later on, I went into making uh, hams, which uh, my dad didn't make, and, uh, and, and other varieties of ethnic sausages as they became more popular, whether it was Greek, uh, Italian, Hungarian, Polish, German, some uh, Swedish sausage as well. So why did you decide to make hams? Well, again, um, uh, I felt that uh, we would buy hams from other people in the early stages, and there was always a complaint that the hams were too salty and too, too, too much fat, especially on the cover of the outside of the ham. And I said, I think I'm going to try to make our own ham. So after several experiments with cures, and um, I decided I had a particular flavor profile that was uh, seemed to be appealing. And so I went on to uh, make hams, and I, I trimmed them well, and I, uh, I kept that salt content uh, so that it wasn't a salty ham. And people just seemed to like what I had, and, uh, uh, and we just kept growing from there. And now, of course, it's a, it's a major, major um, item as far as our overall sales go, probably. Uh, Maybe uh, 40 percent, 50 percent of our sales are uh, with hams, and of course, then we went in to make uh, various uh, deli-type hams, not just uh, smoked hams with the bone in, but and spiral hams that are uh, that we glaze, and uh, several different uh, uh, boneless hams with uh, maple syrup, maple uh, flavored, and uh, some uh, other uh, uh, styles of. Uh, deli hams. So who do you think helped you towards the beginning of your career the most? Well, that was my general manager. He was my right-hand man, without a doubt. He worked for me for, um, well, about 30 years. He started in high school. And then he went to his college, maybe had a couple of years of college, and he still was working for me. And then uh, he came in full-time, and, and uh, my uh, general manager left. I asked him if he wanted to get groomed and trained for that position, and he did. He was only like about 23, 4 years old. Um, and um, I just kept learning and training him, and we worked together. And he was uh, a big uh, asset to the company for, for many years, but decided to retire early about 10 years ago. So where is the company now? Well, my son, uh, Michael, and my uh, son-in-law, Todd Meyer, are pretty much running the uh, business right now and uh, have been for the past seven, eight years since I'm semi-retired. Um, and I think that they are taking it to a, uh, a new level of uh, automation um, so that we can be competitive. I think they're finding, that again, similar things that I did, they're finding the new product out there, the product that people want, today's today products, and uh, they're doing an excellent job of uh, taking it to a new level. What do you think the benefits are of a family-run business? Oh, I think there's definitely advantages. I think, like, uh, like everything in life, you know, you take care of your own uh, better than you do somebody else's, and you, uh, you're not just passing through, you're, you're you're there to stay because it's you have ownership, and of course it's so nice to pass this on. Uh, my son and son-in-law are third generation now, and hopefully there'll be uh, more generations to come. And that's uh, such a big advantage to uh, having a, a business because you're not just thinking of the customer and the, and the employee and and the business for today and for uh, a few months or a few years down the road, you're thinking of it for a long time, so you want to leave somewhat of a legacy of, for, for the next generation. And uh, it's, uh, I think it served us well, and it would probably serve any company very well to have family there that, are, that have more than just the, uh, a dollar sign or a paycheck. Uh, they have their heart into it, as uh, my family does. 
What do you think of the new buildings that Dearborn Brand has acquired over the years? Well, I think they complement the. Um, we, we took. We bought a uh, German sausage, uh, a small factory and retail outlet in Roseville, uh, eight or ten years ago, and that's complemented our uh, product line, and it's uh, allowed us to make certain products there that were. It just made it more practical to make them there in, in Roseville at the, uh, the Nietzsche plant. And then we uh, purchased a, another plant in uh, Cone County, uh, M&K, uh, we call it. And that makes uh, these mini salamis, mini, mini sausages, and jerkies products. And uh, it's, uh, they're really doing a wonderful job with that and again that complements our entire product line. What kind of relationship have you built with your customers over the years? Well I, I run into people all the time, uh, customers uh, that uh, their, their children bought our products and uh, it's almost almost every day. Uh, it's really, really incredible of course living in a Dearborn area or living in Dearborn all these years. Run into people that uh, pay so much compliment to our product and how their children enjoy it. I talked to someone just the other day, and it's it's uh, first of June right now, seventh uh, or eighth actually, but uh, of, a, of a couple that were telling me that their uh, daughter was graduating from high school, and she said, uh, their "Mom and Dad," she says, "You've got to have Dearborn hot dogs at the uh, at my little graduation." That was really uh, means a lot to hear that, and I hear it. I hear it on quite frequently that type of thing. How much they enjoy our product, but um, what they maybe don't know is how much I've enjoyed making product for them, and and to see uh, us grow, and to see uh, the acceptance that we've had from our customers. So it's it's really uh, um, with all of these things, I always thank them for patronizing our product.